what up you guys and welcome to another video if this is your first time seeing this face my name is Davi the hipster make sure you subscribe to this channel like the video if you want more conspiracy theory videos comment down below I can always take constructive criticism or tell me how wonderful I'm doing and share with all your friends so today as you can see I'm gonna bring you a conspiracy theory video with two of them now I looked high and low on the internet I love the shit out these videos way before Shane Dawson started doing them. I was always taught um telling my friends that I was on the weird side of YouTube when you start hearing crazy ass shit on the internet now I love me a good conspiracy theory the crazier the theory is the more likely I think it's true but I'm gonna bring it to you in a slightly different format and I'm gonna bring you two different conspiracy theory videos today that I have not seen everybody does the same thing hold on everybody brings you the same conspiracy theory videos either the Mandela effect you know video game conspiracy theory so I dug up two conspiracy theory videos that I kind of have not seen anybody else do and I've heard of these before so without further ado let's get into this video but first let's cue the professionalism now that we're all professional I'm gonna be bringing you first welcome to my news station when shit hits the fan news <laughs> you'll see the logo below <laughs> so I got my papers let's start the conspiracy theories the first conspiracy theory video I mean the video the first conspiracy theory is going to be the one of the 1991 gangsta rap conference real quick let me get thugified now that we got that out the way let's do this conspiracy theory so the thing about this conspiracy theory is that back in 1991 there was a secret fucking meeting okay in the outskirts of los angeles this came up um this started kind of the story started getting traction when supposedly some guy who attended the meeting sent emails to everybody news stations of um blogs and all this type of stuff saying that he was in that meeting and he couldn't contain no longer hiding the secret and he wanted to get it out there so people could know what the hell was going on and what shady shit the music industry was doing so we shall start so I have something so this is begin as an anonymous an, an, uh, an anonymous person sent everyone in their mama a letter that's exactly what I have on my professional notes okay so this person was a guy he says that he's from Europe well I'm assuming it's a guy he said he's from Europe he came to America back in the 80s uh, you know made himself very well um, I guess he had like a very good um, placement in the music industry he was very higher up but he was the decision maker sorry about my phone okay he was the decision maker he made it so all of a sudden he got invited to this very 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 secret meeting they told him hey one of his bosses that worked with him in the office told him hey we're gonna have him eat, uh, a meeting come to my house at yada yada time don't bring nobody see you there when he shows up there he sees other colleagues and a couple of other people that he has never seen and somewhere in the background talking in the corner were these guys in suits who look like the Muslim. He said they didn't really talk to anybody. They didn't talk to other people. Um, they were just very to themselves and looking really mean and kind of like, you know, keeping an eye on the room. All of a sudden, his boss comes out who he works with and he actually told them they were going to go ahead and start this meeting and people wanted to know you know it was him and other type of executive move, uh, music industry people not only from his company but from various companies and a lot of them were just very confused like well, what is this about so uh, the guy who was holding the meeting or conducting the meeting said well before I begin anything I am going to need everybody to sign a non-disclosure form and if you break this agreement there will be consequences and you do not know and you do not want to know what the consequences are going to be some people walked out they're like no I don't want no part of this if I have to sign a non-disclosure form what the fuck like I didn't sign up for this I don't have to be here and they walked out they let them leave the people who decided to stay including this anonymous person signed the agreement form the meeting begun 
So basically, what was going on, long story short, they saying that the music industry and these top executives were, um, I guess, investing in private prisons. And what they wanted to do is all of a sudden get a whole bunch of gangster rap onto the airwaves so it could kind of, I guess not brainwash, but influence criminal activity. So, you know, gangster rap was all about fuck the police, you know, shoot this, shoot that, you know, a very lavish lifestyle, also very drug heavy lifestyle. So they said if they can promote this and have other people act this way and possibly go to jail, they can make a lot of money because the more people that go to prison, which is true, it's been known, you know, the more people that go to prison, these prisons get way more government funding. They um, get get more money. It's a billion dollar industry. It's, it's no secret. So he was like startled. He was like, what? Like, you must be really kidding, right? So he goes on to say, basically, I want you guys to play gangster rap. We're going to just flood the radio stations with gangster rap. And it's going to be profitable. And if you guys want to be a part of it, you guys can invest in this. It's going to be a good investment for you guys. So per this anonymous person, he didn't want no part to do with it. He said, you know what, this is not for me. I think this is wrong what you're doing. And they told him, well, that's your opinion, but you're going to shut the fuck up and you're going to let us do what we're going to do. And that's when you got to see that this guy came out, This these guys came out, and it was just way more and more in droves of, you know, more gangster rap playing. Now, a lot of people easily debunk this theory because they're saying that gangster rap and rap in general itself is listened to young suburban white kids, you know. So they were like, well, what is there going to be influenced? But at, as well, you can't think that that's the only thing that they're influenced. They're influencing droves of people who idolize these people and idolize the music, everything they're singing in their music. So. What do I believe in it? My final thought of this is shit could be very possible. You know, like, shit could be possible. I wouldn't really put it. That seems like a very good, like, uh, it seems, it seems very possible. So that's all I'm going to say about it. Music industry, don't kill me. <laughs> okay. That's be bad shit. All right. Second conspiracy theory. Mass media controlling or not controlling but programming your thoughts let's get into it so this theory comes that TV and the people who run TV and not only those people that run TV but own radio stations um, advertisement prints anything that you read see and hear is controlled to slowly program you into what they want you to into the mode that they want you to be in. This is so cool. This is not as crazy as it may sound. So let's get into it. First of all, let me fix my choker. Okay. So the way that this came up, people started to freak the fuck out. Because back in 1983, there were 50 corporations that controlled media outlets in America. And recently now, if you can guess, it went from 50 to 6. And they're going to be popping up on either side. The six today are Comcast, Walt Disney Company, 21st Century Fox, Time Warner, Viacom, and CBS Corporation. Now basically means that 90% of TV, radio, news, everything you watch, read, listen is controlled by only six corporations. If you think about it, you can't tell me that there's not bias going on when they're reporting the news to you because you've seen it. You've seen it right right then and there. You know, they want to tell you what they want to tell you. You know, you never know if these uh, giant corporations could be embedded with political parties and everybody's just dipping into each other's pocket to make the world go round. So it could be possible that the things that you're getting is very biased. And, you know, programming you to what they want you to think it's normal and should be your reality. Now, they're molding us to think what is normal and how to behave. 
and we're just huge money makers so basically we are more concerned of keeping up with them than knowing what's really going on and I get and I guess you can say well what the fuck that be I just like watching you know TV it's not influencing me but if you think about it when the Super Bowl was on they pay millions of dollars for you to watch those fucking commercials so you're all of a sudden gonna be watching the Super Bowl a Doritos commercial comes on a Bud Light commercial comes on and you're gonna be like damn I haven't had more than Doritos in a long time oh shit I forgot Twix was around let me go give me some Twix sell skyrocket goddamn Beyonce wears something or Rihanna wears something or drink something or eat something and right away sales go off for that particular product when formation came out Beyonce mentioned red lobster and red lobster sales went up you know so if you're looking at reality TV and keeping up with these girls you're gonna be like, well, damn, maybe I want a butt implant. Damn, maybe I need to get my lips done. Damn, maybe, ooh, I do need that Kai Shadow palette. I do need this. I do need that. So, I guess what they're saying, they're kind of are molding you. And we are being molded because everything that these celebrities do, we're right there doing it. And, um, my final thought on this, this shit could pretty be possible. I don't think that only six corporations should be co controlling everything that we watch, see, and hear. You know, Viacom itself controls NTV. I think it controls a couple of radio stations. Um, CBS, if I'm not wrong, they control here in Chicago B96 and 103.5. If I'm not wrong, don't quote me, Harley, on that. Um, I don't know, like, it's kind of crazy that it could work because TV does influence us. TV does tell us what is kind of normalized. You know, back in the day, people were like, oh, uh, Becky, look at that. But and today, everybody wants that juicy booty and big lips. So, I don't know. But, I'm going to bring one of our youngest correspondents. And she's going to give you an idea to see if TV is influencing our young generation in a bad way. Let's go to Hey her. guys, TV's not bad influence to other kids because they're just encouraging them. Yes, I like Disney Princesses, so I'm wearing this dress because I look better than other girls. Yes, I have an iPad in my hand. It's I don't know about the whole Apple thing, so I gotta figure out what this do. And I like watermelon juice because Beyonce drinks it, so why can I not drink it? Bye peasants. Thank you to our youngest correspondent. I'm not sure if she made a great debate about it, but let me know what you think. If you want to see more conspiracy theories and if you enjoy this video, please make sure that you subscribe to my channel. Um, like this video, comment it. Let's go the fucking hipster fam. All my social media links will be down below. Contact me. Let me creep on you. Creep on me. Let's become the BFFs that we're supposed to be. Until next time, turn your fucking magic on.